I was impressed with that move you pulled. Bang. Ladies and gentlemen, girls, children of all ages, it's me, it's G, it's the WMD, the undefeated, undisputed YouTube champion. That's right, it's the Maverick, Mark Daniels. And you guys, you know what time it is. It's whoa, whoa, WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania weekend, guys. And uh, I thought it would be cool if we did a top 25 favorite wrestlers list. Now, I haven't done too much wrestling content in this channel, really. Um, I think we started a Let's Play of a uh, wrestling game. A few years ago that we did like four episodes of and never continued. But beyond that, <laughs> we haven't done too much. So before we get into this top 25 tier list, I wanted to quickly uh, talk about like my, I guess, history of a wrestling fan. Just because it will reflect who's on my list, right? Um, because there's going to be some people that's on this list that are like, how the heck do you not have this wrestler on this list? For example, let's use Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's not on my list. Um, I didn't grow up during that period of wrestling, and I've gone back and watched some of Hulk Hogan stuff, but it's not, it's not quite the same when you don't grow up with it, right? Like, I can enjoy some of the stuff, but at the same time, it's like, when I started watching wrestling, which was in 1998, uh, around that time period, I was about eight years old, um, he was in WCW, you know, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and I didn't watch WCW, in fact, to this day, and it's not a brag, it's just, it's just true, I've actually never seen an episode of Nitro or Thunder. I've gone back and watched some clips here and there, but I've never actually sat down and watched it. At some point, I wanted to like sit down and watch through all of it, but I, pff, who the hell has that much time? I know I don't. Um, but it is what it is. So, as I mentioned, I started watching this about 1998 um, during the Attitude Era. So, you're going to see a lot of Attitude Era wrestlers here. Um, I think that's just normal. But there's, you're going to see some wrestlers from you know multiple different uh, companies on this list. You know, some wrestlers that... Um, you know, maybe New Japan Pro Wrestling or some wrestlers that I followed through the Indies to WWE, and we'll talk about that as we go. So not only are we going to uh, list my top 25 favorite wrestlers here, I'm also going to list to you guys uh, a favorite moment and or a favorite match of said wrestler as well. So that should be pretty cool. Um, this actually took a long time to prep. Um, I probably spent like, this is going to sound weird, but probably a good, I don't know, three hours putting you know everything together here between making the actual list of the 25 wrestlers um thinking about my favorite moments of matches then figure out like when those happen and then also even just the tier list maker here i had to resize every single image so that it would fit because otherwise these images were like all weird shaped and cut off some of their heads and stuff so i had to like reshape all of them so this took me quite a while to set up um but you know it's definitely worth it plus like i said it's wrestlemania week I said weekend earlier. It's actually like a full week long, right? That's pretty insane. But yes, I've been a fan since I'm about about eight years old, or thirty uh, years old now, and I've never stopped watching. I've pretty much have always watched. Um, I mean, I'll take small breaks here and there. I, I think I took like a month long break early uh, last year, some point. Just so much was going on, and I just kind of just fell out of it for a little bit. Um, it was about only about a month long until like a pay-per-view and then once the pay-per-view hit I was back in but sometimes I'll check out here and there but for the most part I've been a you know just a wrestling fan I watch wrestling every single week um, I do watch currently I do watch obviously Raw Smackdown NXT I do watch AEW all weekly and then I do watch the occasional massive you know big New Japan Pro Wrestling show as well don't watch all of it I don't have enough time to do that, but I do watch like the major shows, and then I'll check out like Impact Wrestling here and there. I'll check out you know some Ring of Honor stuff here and there, maybe some other indie stuff. You know, maybe not, maybe I'll watch like a Triple A show or something. Uh, just just a wide variety of different wrestling. But anyways, let's get into the list here. Um, so number 25. So I hid the wrestlers, uh, so you guys can't see and get spoiled by anybody. And there's gonna be someone here that are gonna be shocking. But again, this is my own personal list. I'm not ranking who I think is the greatest wrestlers of all time. This is my personal favorites list throughout my childhood to now so um, there's going to be some current wrestlers some older wrestlers and everything in between so number 25 is actually x-pac um so this might be a surprise to some people because i know there's a bit of a stigma with x-pac in fact in wrestling just in case you're not a wrestling fan there's a thing called x-pac heat or go a home you know go home heat um go away heat uh, basically, what that means is uh, somebody who, not somebody you dislike because they're, you know, their character is a bad person or anything like that, but mostly because they make you change the channel. They make you want to go to the bathroom. You take a bathroom break when they're on. You get the idea. They're very boring. You know, 
that term never really occurred to me when I was watching wrestling as a kid. I've always loved X-Pac. Uh, I thought he had a really cool look. I thought he was very charismatic. Loved his wrestling. And I think uh, X-Pac, especially when you look at like uh, you know the wrestling style of today, a bit ahead of his time. And I think uh, a lot of wrestlers probably uh, got inspired by X-Pac. You can kind of tell by some of the wrestling style. And there's a few wrestlers on this list that definitely inspired the current generation of wrestlers for sure, one way or another. But I think X-Pac definitely deserves that nod. Uh, my favorite X-Pac moment was... Uh, I always enjoyed him as a tag team with Kane. I love all. I love DX. Period. First off, I should say, I should say that I love. I love DX. Anything DX, I'm in. Um, but I enjoyed his tag team with Kane. His little feud he had with Kane, and then also, um, I put my favorite match here as him versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 15 for the European title. That's kind of a weird one because Shane isn't like a like a wrestler in the traditional sense. But I thought they had some really good chemistry and some really good matches. Uh, but yeah, X Pac is number 25. So then next is number 24, and that is going to be a current wrestler. He's actually currently a tag team champion. Ooh. Dolph Ziggler, another one that's probably surprising because I know that um, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler's stock, as far as like pro wrestling goes, has fallen quite a bit. Um, but man, I'll never like stop being a fan of somebody just because maybe they're not being used um, very much, or they're not doing a whole lot. Um, I think about what he's done, you know, for me, you know, previously and up until now. And, you know, my favorite moment with Dolph Ziggler has to be the cash-in on Alberto Del Rio. Um, I wrote it down here. It is April 8th, 2013, because there's no way I'm going to remember that. But April 8th, 2013, on Monday Night Raw, he cashed in on Del Rio to become world champion. What a moment. The crowd was hot. I was, you know, goosebumps. You know, a lot of these moments on this list, goosebumps, literally. And uh, I go back and watch it every now and then. That pop was huge. Um, he's always had some great matches, loved his feud with, like, you know, Rey Mysterio, he had that great feud with The Miz when he put his career on the line, um, just some great moments there, my favorite match of his is probably versus Chris Jericho at SummerSlam, uh, 2012, fantastic match, uh, Seth Rollins is number 23, let me find him, do, 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 do. There he is, number 23, Seth Rollins. So another one of my favorite moments, another cash-in. <laughs> the heist of the centuries, it's called. He cashed in at WrestleMania 31, joining Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar and making it a triple threat match. What a match that was. First off, even before Rollins came out, I love uh, Roman versus Brock at Mania 31. I didn't like the match. I think, is it at Mania 34? I didn't write this down, but I think Roman and Brock had a match that was just boring. But their match at, at WrestleMania 31 was was great, loved it, and then Rollins added to it and then became you know WWE champion. Uh, but my favorite actual match from uh, Rollins is actually later in this list, but I'll list uh, another one that's one of my favorites, and that's versus John Cena at SummerSlam 2015, where they had both the US and WWE title on the line. Um, very good match indeed. Uh, next will be a New Japan Pro Wrestler, the ace of New Japan. Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, I know there's a lot of people that their favorite wrestler right now is Okada. Um, for my money, I always bet on the ace. I love Hiroshi Tanahashi way more than I love Okada. I like Okada. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I, just, I there's something about Hiroshi Tanahashi that oozes charisma. Um, the, you know, he's in incredible shape even to this day. I, I think he's just so smooth in the ring. And Okada's really good too. Don't get me wrong. And one of my favorite matches in recent times is you know Okada versus Omega, um, the match where they went to, uh, to a 60-minute draw. I love that. And normally that would be a type of match that people would hate the finish to, but for some reason it just worked. It was just perfect. I love that match, and I love all the Okada Omega matches. But just Hiroshi Tanahashi to me, great competitor, great wrestler. Uh, his favorite match for me was against Shinsuke Nakamura at the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax in 2015. But I wanted to give the nod to his uh, more recent match against Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Um, my favorite match of that entire uh, Wrestle Kingdom card, I believe it was a two-day event, right? That Was that one of the, the, the uh, not one of, but the two-day Wrestle Kingdom? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, that was just last, my, I mean, this last few, last few years for me has been a bit of a blur, so I forgive me for that, but um, especially last year during the pandemic, but I'm pretty sure it was last year, right? Um, I sure wrote down the year. But uh, him versus Jericho is my favorite match, and I know that a lot of people love the uh, the uh, junior heavyweight match more. I, I, and I thought it was okay, but man, just Tanahashi versus Jericho, they started off, they didn't have to do a whole lot of wrestling. It was just it was just one of those, like, uh, it was like a dream match scenario, you know, kind of like Rock and Hogan, 
where they didn't have to do a whole lot, and it was just like, ooh and ah, and I was just so sucked into that match. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Um, so, number 21 is another current day wrestler, and that is one, Adam Cole, baby. Um, I've been a big fan of Adam Cole's for a long time. I followed his career through Ring of Honor, to New Japan Pro Wrestling, some of his stuff in PWG. And uh, then when he finally came, it was it was pretty much written on the wall that he was coming to uh, NXT, and I was so excited for it. And then him in, in the Undisputed Era has been really good. Now we have his match against Kyle O'Reilly this week. Um, obviously, this is going to be going up after that match, but I'm recording this on Tuesday, so I actually haven't seen the match yet, but I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. Um, but I love Adam Cole. So my favorite match from Adam Cole is against Ricochet at TakeOver Brooklyn uh, 4 in 2018. Very good match. Uh, that super kick, and you guys know what super kick I'm talking about. Amazing. Um, but I wanted to put a, this is a weird match. I and, tr and I trust me, I know this is gonna be a random match, but it's one of my favorite six man tag matches ever. It's just a fun match. So if you can find it, definitely look for it. But it's Adam Cole and the Young Bucks versus Rich Swan, Candice LeRae, and A.R. Fox at PWG Battle of Los Angeles 2013. Just a fun match. I don't know why I like that match so much, but I do. It's just fun. It's just a fun match. But I thought I'd put that on there. Uh, because the match that I watch every now and then just to get a get little it gets a little kick out of me. Um, so number 20, we're going into some of the bigger guns here maybe for some people. And that is one, Mick Foley. Bang, bang! Um, obviously Mick Foley, you know, Mankind dude, love Cactus Jack, love it all. Um, obviously I first got introduced to him as Mankind in WWF. Um, but then I, you know, I've gone since then gone back and watched some of his other stuff as you know Cactus Jack. I've um, seen some of his stuff because like Dude Love was actually a little bit before my time too. Actually, um, I didn't really see too much of the Dude Love stuff. And I, don't, I don't know, did Dude Love even last that long? I don't think I don't think it did. But I know he had like that match against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, that was really good. But my favorite match with Mick Foley though is actually uh, a Hell in a Cell match, and this obviously versus the Undertaker where he gets thrown off the cell. Um, loses some, I believe he loses some of his teeth. Is that correct? He, yeah, he got a tooth stuck in his nostril. And is that also the match where he messed up his ear as well? I think so, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, um, I mentioned Foley a few other times in this list too, by the way. I really love Foley. Uh, he was one of those very uh, flexible characters that you can put in a lot of different positions, and he just flourishes, right? And obviously the guy's crazy, put himself in so many harms. Like that match against uh, The Rock. Right, where he takes all those still still chair headshots. Um, it was the uh, empty arena match, I believe. Just just brutal, absolutely bloody mess. But I uh, absolutely love McFoley. Number nineteen. It's probably gonna be the only like real classic uh, wrestlers on this list, and that's gonna be the Macho Man Randy Savage. Now, I've gone back and watched a lot of the old stuff. I've gone back and watched like all. I've went through and watched like every WrestleMania. You know. All you know, all the different wrestling pay-per-views, and there was two wrestlers that really stood out for me personally. Now, I knew of Macho Man when I was younger, obviously. Um, I never watched WCW, but when I was a kid, I knew who Macho Man was. I knew Goldberg, DDP, Sting. I knew all the big ones, right? Uh, Raven. I know it's not really a big one, but Raven. Quote the Raven, Nevermore. We used to quote that all the time. Um, but I never watched WCW as I mentioned earlier. But I love uh, Macho Man as a character. My favorite matches. <sighs> It was against this guy. His name was uh, the Human Spider. And this is when he was Bone Saw. Bone Saw is ready, you know. Um, but seriously, I've gone back and watched a lot of uh, old stuff, and two wrestlers stood out to me personally that I really love. That's Mr. Perfect and Macho Man. Now, Mr. Perfect didn't quite make this list. If this was like a top 30, top 50 list, Mr. Perfect definitely would be on that list. Um, just uh, quickly about Mr. Perfect, I just love. Uh, some of the extra pep in his step, like when he would get out of the ring and outside the ring, like everything he did was just so good. Um, just so fluid. He would take extra steps in his rest. Like, it's hard to explain. You have to actually watch him. And I'm sure if you have seen him, you know what I'm talking about. But like, everything he does, he just does something like he, he, he adds a little uh, mustard to it, so to speak. Um, it's just really good. But Macho Man is a character. Probably the most imitated wrestler um, of all time in terms of, like, if someone's going to you know, uh, imitate a wrestler, Macho Man, you know, ooh, yeah, you know, Macho Man's definitely that guy, maybe Hogan is up there, Ric Flair, but love Macho Man as a character, my favorite match from uh, Macho Man that I've seen, and I haven't seen every single one, there's no way, but uh, Randy Savage versus Ric Flair at WrestleMania 8, what a classic, um, Ric Flair's not on this list, I know that's going to surprise a lot of people, um, but you got to keep in mind, my, my first introduction to Ric Flair is when he came over from WCW to WWF, um, he's obviously much older then, and I didn't really have too much memory of him before that. 
I knew who he was, but I didn't really see much about him. Um, and then obviously I've seen him more in Evolution and things like that. And I've gone back and watched all of his, and they're and they're great, great wrestler, great cardio condition. I mean, the guy could go for for forever. Um, and his match against, uh, I'm trying to think, did I? I want to make sure I didn't put this down before I say it. Uh, yeah, I haven't put that. Okay, his match against Shawn Michaels, that retirement match. Oh, Chef's kiss, so good. But he's not on my list because I don't have that many memories of him. But I do love Ric Flair and love Macho Man. Number 18 is a WCW original, and that is one Booker T. Again, didn't watch WCW, so I didn't watch too much of like Harlem Heat and things like that. But uh, not growing up, but I've gone back and watched obviously some of it. And uh, just love Booker T's a character, so much charisma, love the Spinner Rooney, love his stuff with Goldust, um, it's what, a, what a great makeshift tag team. Uh, but my favorite match or moment from Booker T's that supermarket brawl with Steve Austin, talk about legendary. Um, I remember watching as a kid just, just, just dying of laughter, just love it. Uh, but Booker T's been a part of a lot of great moments in uh, WWE. I loved King Booker, what a great gimmick that was. Um, but yeah, love Booker T, great wrestler. And then number 17 is actually another New Japan Pro Wrestler original, but current WWE wrestler, that's, of course, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, you know, I started watching New Japan Pro Wrestling because of AJ Styles' um, involvement in Wrestle Kingdom, I believe, 10. And I think that's when he wrestled uh, Nakamura, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it is, by the way. Um so uh, the reason why I was like oh, a big fan of AJ Styles, you know, I want to watch him wrestle. I was watching him, in, you know, in Ring of Honor when he was wrestling over there, and watching him in New Japan Pro Wrestling as part of the Bullet Club. And you know, I was a big fan of him, big fan of the Young Bucks. So I wanted to watch uh, the show, and I've seen Nakamura a few times, and every time I'd see him, I was just like captivated by just he just has this charisma about. Him. He doesn't even have to talk, or he's just, he's just so uh, such an interesting wrestler, right? Like just so unique, and I was always captivated by him, and then. Um, when I found out he was going to uh, NXT, oh man, I was so excited. In fact, he's, uh, his match against Sami Zayn is my favorite uh, Nakamura match. Goosebumps, and it's my favorite uh, NXT match of all time. And I know that's high praise, because NXT constantly puts out great matches. Um, they're known for you know constantly putting over these great takeover shows. Every match on the card is usually really good. Um, if, if there's an average match on the card, it's disappointing. That's how good it is, right? But... Man, just the, the energy from the building that night, Nakamura coming out. Oh, so good. And unfortunately, that's kind of where he peaks in WWE in my mind. I mean, he went on and won the Royal Rumble. You know, he had a, a decent feud with AJ Styles in WWE. Um, but man, it's it's such a, it's a, such a shame that he could have, you know, he could have been on, uh, you know, been a WWE champion. He could have been used so much more efficiently. But you can say that about a lot of wrestlers. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that too much, but I'm just going to say that love Nakamura, love his uh, his expressions, I love his uh, just the way he moves around the ring, I love his, you know, just his wrestling style, his hard hitting like when, he, when he's on and he's doing you know the, the, the more Japanese strong style type wrestling so good, so many great matches against guys like Tanahashi, obviously his match with AJ Styles, I'm a big fan of so, him versus Sami Zayn though favorite NXT match of all time uh, next is number 16 the rated R superstar Edge who just came back to uh, WWE about a year ago. Uh, won the Royal Rumble this year. He's got a match this uh, weekend against Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan sneaking, sneaking his way through uh, into the match. Um, but, you know, I grew up, as I mentioned, during the Attitude Era. And one of the guys I really got to see kind of like grow in wrestling was Edge. Um, you know, when I started watching, he was uh, just coming into to, uh, WWF. He was part of the Brood. Then they kind of broke off him and Edge and Christian broke off from the brew. Then he had more of a singles career, won the King of the Ring, uh, went on to become like Intercontinental Champion, and then eventually won Money in the Bank and then cashed in and won the uh, WWE title. Um, just such a great career. He's he's like what a th I hate I hate guessing because I think because I'm gonna probably get this one, but he's like a like an 11 time or a 13 time like world champion, like incredible, absolutely incredible career. And when he had a retirement, it broke my heart. Um, there's very there are some f there's a few moments in wrestling that have made me cry. I'm not I'm not gonna, gonna pretend like I never cry. Um, him retiring, man, that retirement speech really got me. And I have gone back and watched it a few times um, over you know since he's retired. Gets me every time, man. It's very sad. So the fact that he's back makes me very happy. And I know people have kind of fallen off him a little bit. 
um, because you know he is a he is older now and but it's a little bit different because like people will compare him to, like Goldberg right or like oh yeah part timer guy we're kind of hypocritical because people want to see Edge one it's a bit different and I like Goldberg I don't have a problem with Goldberg coming in for the occasional match as long as he's not you know squashing you know uh, the fiend <laughs> but. You know, Edge, it's different because it's more of a redemption story, and uh, he never lost the world title when he retired, when he had a force, when he forced, forcibly retired. It wasn't even in his, you know, in his hands. It wasn't his choice. So, this weekend, and I'm really looking, this is probably the match, <sighs> is this the match I'm looking forward to the most? I think so. Uh, and it's a match that I can't really tell who's going to win, because it could go either of the three directions, honestly. It's a very good story going into probably the best built story, at least at WrestleMania. Maybe not NXT, because I'm really looking forward to Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly as well. Um, but him versus Roman and Daniel Bryan, I can see either of these guys winning. I think Daniel Bryan has, is the least likely to win, probably. He's probably going to be the one that gets pinned, if I were to guess. But I could see them giving it to him as well. You know, I could definitely see that. Um... Must be interesting to see what happens with Edge. Is he going to retire after this match? If he loses, is he going to move on to Monday Night Raw and feud with Drew McIntyre if he wins the title? Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But big fan of Edge. Uh, but I didn't even mention this yet. My favorite match with uh, Edge was against Mick Foley at WrestleMania 22. What a great match! Um, it was a match that, in my mind, really solidified Edge as kind of like that, you know, the next level guy, you know, that main event guy. But I also want to mention a match that I think is a little underrated, which is weird to say, but it's against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 24. What a match that was. Okay, so, uh, number 15, Kevin Owens. Um, huge fan of Kevin Owens. Followed his career as, you know, Kevin Steen uh, through the Indies, Ring of Honor. Um, in fact, I have an honorable mention. This isn't my favorite match of his, but it's one of my favorite matches of his. It's him versus El Generico, Ring of Honor Final Battle 2010. Check it out. I'm sure that, that one's going to be easy to find. The PWG match I mentioned earlier probably won't be easy to find. This one should be pretty easy to find. At least find clips of it. Uh, such a brutal match. Um, but my favorite match of his is probably against John Cena at Elimination Chamber because, you know, he came in, he, you know, he, uh, came in so high. He was the NXT champion. John Cena was the U.S. champion. And John Cena was doing that U.S. championship open challenge every week. And, you know, one week Sami Zayn came out. One week Kevin Owens came out, didn't fight, you know, didn't want to fight him. Um, they ended up, you know, scrapping, and he challenged him to a match. Everyone just kind of assumed that John Cena was going to win this match, but he didn't. Kevin Owens won. Not only did he win, he won cleanly. It was huge, huge moment for uh, Kevin Owens. Um, love that match. Really good match. Uh, one of the favorite things he did in that match, and I haven't, he hasn't done it in a while, uh, but it's very impressive. It's uh, someone is getting, getting ready to deliver a superplex on him. But he picks the guy up trying to give him a superplex into a superplex of his own and then hits him with a superplex. It's, I know I didn't explain it very well, but just tr go back and watch um, go back and watch some of his old, older matches in WWE and you'll see him do that. It's very impressive. Um, but love Kevin Owens. But my favorite moment from Kevin Owens wasn't actually that match. In WWE, it was the Festival of Friendship with Chris Jericho. What a, what a great uh, moment that was. What a great pairing that was, too. Just so entertaining every week. Uh, but just... Uh, you know, he gives he gives Chris Jericho the list for his uh, for a gift, and Jericho picks up the list and he's like, "Why is my name on this list?" And then he lists it up, and you see list of KO and Kevin was attacks him, throws him you know through the TV. So good, so good. Um, but yeah, big fan of Kevin Owens, um, and I'm looking forward to his match with Sami Zayn this weekend. Another wrestler uh, wrestling this weekend. Uh, number fourteen is actually a, a Hall of Famer this year. He's also the mayor of Knox County, and that is, of course, Kane. By God, it's got to be Kane. Um, obviously, Kane is uh, a big big, uh, a big wrestler during the Attitude Era, up, uh, up until the last few years, really. I mean, he's, he's been wrestling for a long time, um, has all kinds of different records in, like, the uh, Royal Rumble, with most eliminations. Um, he's one of, the, like, if you look at the list of, like, people who've had, like, the most matches in WWE period, I know he's up there. Might be number one. I, I can't remember who it was, but he's definitely up there. Like the amount of people that's had the most matches on Raw, though. He's he's been around for a long time. Um, but my favorite moment of Kane was actually his debut. You know, ripping the door off the cell, uh, coming face to face with the Undertaker. 
Um, that was at Bad Blood in Your House, October 5th, 1997. So that is a little bit, um, I don't want to say it was a little bit before my time, because I actually seen it happen, but it was before I was in the wrestling. Um, because I was at a neighbor's house, um, and we were watching, it was, it was in the background while we were watching, we were talking, I remember seeing that, I was just like, whoa, that's, that's probably like one of my earliest wrestling memories, but of course I can go back now and watch it on, uh, the network or, or Peacock or whatever, um, but just such a, such a really cool debut, probably, uh, is that my favorite debut in wrestling? It'd be between that, Nakamura, or Chris Jericho, all great, uh, debuts in WWE, but, Man, what a what a moment that was. But my favorite match would actually then be versus The Undertaker WrestleMania 14. Now, while the match may not have been the best, from a match perspective, the story going to it was so good. The build-up was really good. And, uh, you know, Undertaker came, un, you know, unseverable. You know, just just such a, a great pairing. And don't know if we could ever replicate something like that in wrestling again because they've tried similar things. Because obviously they're not brothers in real life, right? And... They've tried, I remember, the most recent thing I could think of is uh, Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle, right, father and son, and as soon as that started, people were just crapping all over, didn't even give it a chance to flourish. I don't think we can really have, like, a brother pairing like that again um, that aren't real brothers without people just kind of taking a crap all over. Because kind of the product, you know, it's kind of uh, the time that we live in now. You can't get away with things like that as much, but still, I love it, and I love... Um, how their careers went, so, you know, at some points they were tag teams, you know, you know tag team together as the Brothers of Destruction, feuding with each other, um, you know, cat and ma you know, casket matches, you know, Infern did they have an Infernal match? Surely they did. Um, buried Alive matches, etc. Such, such a great thing. But Kane himself, um, just his story, you know, this band that was, you know, burned alive, essentially, and, uh, just such a great character. Um, and, really held the test of times in a time period where those kind of gimmicks just doesn't didn't really exist anymore but you still believed in Kane and the Undertaker you know what I mean because um, now it's more of like a more realistic we say that but the Fiend exists but you know what I'm saying right like for the most part like it's more um, realism based I guess um, versus like supernatural or like people with gimmicks you don't see a lot of people with gimmicks anymore which is a shame because I love gimmicks but that's beside the point Kane Number 14. Number 13. Now, this one's going to surprise a lot of people, but let me explain, okay? It's badass Billy Gunn. So, I had to put him on this list, and I had to put him at least in the mid-tier of this list because when I first got into wrestling, he was my favorite wrestler as a kid. He was. My ma I was a massive Billy Gunn fan. Still am. I still get a good, you know, it gets, it gets, it, I get a good pop whenever I see him on AEW doing something or when he was in, like, the New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling, you know, Battle Royal at the beginning of a Wrestle Kingdom. I always get excited to see uh, Billy Gunn. Um, I can't tell you why he was my favorite wrestler as a kid. I honestly have no idea. He had a great look. I thought he was funny. But he was. He was, just my, he was my favorite wrestler. And my favorite memory of his was when he won King of the Ring in 1999. I remember uh, pretty vividly. I was at my friend's uh, Mario and Jarrell's house. They were brothers. And... Uh, it was when internet was just first started getting around, and they had um, internet in their house. We didn't have internet yet, but I remember they were uh, doing some sort of poll on, like, I think the WWF.com, uh, and uh, they were picking who they thought was going to win the King of the Ring, and they were ordering King of the Rings. Like, we would switch back and forth. We would order pay-per-views at our house. They would order pay-per-views at their house, and we would kind of uh, uh, take turns, essentially, right? So we went over there for the King of the Ring, and uh, I remember Jarrell was like, Oh, there's no way Billy Gunn's good. He's got zero chance of winning. The Big Show's gonna win. <laughs> Who's laughing now, Jarrell? Um, but I was so happy when Billy Gunn won. I was massive pop for me. Um, obviously, he never really went on to win like the big one, but you know, he won like the Intercontinental Title, Hardcore Title, multiple tag team titles. Um, but my favorite uh, match from him is uh, the New Age Outlaws, him and the Road Dog versus Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie. Dumpster match. Very good match. Um, okay. So that was number 13. Number 12, another Hall of Famer for uh, going to the Hall of Fame this year, and that is Mr. Hall of Fame himself, Rob Van Dam. You talk about another wrestler who innovated wrestling. Um, he was so unique. I remember when the invasion angle was happening, and uh, I didn't know I didn't know any like really know any of these guys that came over. I mean, it didn't help that it was all like, especially from WCW side, like preliminary talent. Talent, none of the big names really came over. 
So I didn't really know any of those guys. Like, I knew who Booker T was and stuff. Um, but out of all of them, like, I was just so captivated by Rob Van Dam. I remember, too, like, during the feud of, you know, WWE versus WCW slash ECW, uh, one of the only guys that was really, like, over, like, the crowd was actively cheering for was Rob Van Dam. Um, he was very exciting to watch. Um, and when you talk about guys who paved the way for guys today, you know, Rob Van Dam is that guy for sure. You know, a lot of his wrestling style is imitated today. Uh, I'd say his climate, a lot of dives, a lot of flips, a lot of, you know, high-flying maneuvers, um, a lot of, uh, like, MMA-like strikes. RVD is a guy that kind of um, started that, really, on a bigger stage. And uh, my favorite match from Rob Van Dam was against John Cena at One Night Stand in 2006. What a match. If Cena wins, we riot, you know. Um, it's a damn shame that that title reign wasn't very long because of what ended up happening. He got into some uh, legal trouble, obviously. But, man, what an incredible match. And he had so many other great matches, ladder matches, hardcore matches. Um, I'm just a massive fan of. But, yeah, Rob Van Dam, number 12. Number 11 was actually Rob Van Dam's opponent at One Night Stand, and that is John Cena. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. Um, and, honestly, I had to really think about this. So, really, the way I did this list is I sat down. And then I knew who like my fa like my favorite you know top ten was gonna be pretty easy. I just started writing writing names down, and uh, I basically just wrote down 25 names that came to mind as favorite wrestlers. I was thinking like favorite moments of theirs, and uh, John Cena was constantly in some of my favorite like matches of some of my other favorite wrestlers. So I was like, you know what, John Cena deserves to be on this list for sure. And you know as I was like ordering this list around, he ended up falling at number 11, and. Uh, yeah, he's just a guy that, even if you're not a big fan of his personally, and, and as far as, like, his gimmick, like, I liked him as the Doctor of, of Thugonomics, as I'm sure most people did. And I liked him at first when he was doing the more, uh, you know, normal John Cena uh, gimmick, the uh, the Fruity Pebbles John Cena, <laughs> as The Rock would call him. And uh, it, just, it was just stale for a long time, because he was, like, the same gimmick, not a whole lot changed in, like, the ten years or so he was doing that particular uh, variation of John Cena. The only thing that would really change is the color of his gear. Like sometimes he'd be wearing red or purple. You know, that's why they call him uh, Fruity Pebbles John Cena. But when you really think about some of like the best matches in the last 15 years, most of them have John Cena in them, and I think that you know that says a lot about him. And you know, obviously, most people enjoyed his run as U.S. Champion when he's doing the open challenges. You know, as I mentioned earlier with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and many other wrestlers who answered that call. Um, I think he had, he's, he's had an incredible career, and I think he's kind of well missed right now in rest. I see a lot of people saying, man, I wish John Cena would come back. And, uh, you know, you sometimes you never know what you had until it leaves you, and then you're like, crap, I miss him. Uh, and I'm kind of there. He's one of those guys that always cut a really good promo, um, and just had incredible matches. And my favorite match from John Cena is actually, this is the one I was mentioning earlier with Seth Rollins, against Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins in that triple threat match at Royal Rumble 2015. What a match. It actually isn't, I shouldn't say it's my favorite John Cena match, because I mentioned that later in the video. Um, but that's my favorite match outside of that match, um, because I wanted to save that match for that other wrestler that's on this list. And, uh, and you guys could probably guess who that is and what that is, but love John Cena's matches. Like I said, he's had great matches with Edge, he's had great matches with Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Kevin Owens. Uh, he had a great match with Cesaro um, on Monday Night Raw, um, Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam. There's just so many. I'm trying try, try to think of them all off the top of my head, like on the fly. Um, he had some good matches against JBL, um, Batista. I mean, you can go on and on. Pretty much you can name any wrestler. Um, in the last, AJ Styles. Great matches with AJ Styles. Um, I'm trying to think of who else off the top of my head. His match against the Undertaker was very short. So I can really get The Rock had a great feud with The Rock. So, I mean, there's so many. So many wrestlers he had great matches with. Um, Brock Lesnar. He had some great matches with Lesnar as well. Um, but, yeah, just overall, just a great performer. A guy that really delivers in the ring, I think. A little, I know it's going to be weird, a little underrated in my mind when it comes to wrestling fans as a whole. And I think that, uh, you know, 10 years from now, we're starting to feel it now, but I think 10 years from now, especially, we're like, man, that match John Cena had with X, Y, and Z was so good. Um, I think we're going to really uh, have those kind of conversations. Maybe not yet. Maybe still too, a little too fresh. But I think we'll have those conversations soon. Uh, but number 10 is The Game. Triple H. No, oh, wrong wrestler. Uh, kind of spoils uh, a wrestler in the future. But, I mean, 
it was pretty obvious he's going to be on the list anyways. But anyways, Triple H, number 10. Uh, again, as I mentioned with Xbox, loved everything DX. Uh, with Triple H, anything with DX was Shawn Michaels in China. Two, when he was with, you know, the New Age Outlaws and Xbox in China. Um, big fan of Triple H. His rivalry, uh, I loved Evolution, but his rivalry specifically of mine that was one of my favorites was him and Batista. You know, the setup with, you know, Batista, you know, uh, winning the Royal Rumble, picking who he's going to choose uh, as his uh, opponent. You know, was, was he going to go for the world title? Was he going to go for the WWE title? And, uh, you know, he picks SmackDown and gives Triple H and Ric Flair the thumbs up and then the thumbs down. Uh, iconic moment. But he had some great, like, so many great feuds. You know, Shawn Michaels, you know, feuds with, you know, I mentioned John Cena. He had some good matches with. Feuds with, you know, The Rock, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, the list would go on and on with uh, Triple H. Uh, Daniel Bryan. His match with Daniel Bryan is one of my favorites of all time. So, Triple H is another guy that I think a lot of people are like, ah, oh, Triple H, he's he's the guy that got put there because he married their boss's daughter, and he's not really that good. And I see a lot of people say that. But because people say that, even after he's been, like, he's not really an active wrestler anymore, and hasn't really been for quite a while now, he would make appearances and he would make a one-off match here and there. But the fact that people still talk about it just shows how good of a heel he was. In my mind, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, Triple H is probably, all things considered, the second best heel in all of WWE slash WWF. Um, again, I didn't watch WWWF, um, you know, like Bruno San Martino and stuff. And I never, and I, and I did watch a lot of the, um, classic, you know, WWF, you know, the golden era. But for my money, when I look at everything as a whole and how impactful he was in WWE, I think Triple H is that guy. The fact that we still talk to him to this day about burying people and stuff. I think, I think he de definitely deserves that nod. Vince McMahon, to me, is the, is the uh, best heel, by the way, if you guys are curious. In WWE, I'm talking specifically WWE, WWF, by the way. I'm not including WCW and Ring of Honor and everything else. I'm just talking about specifically WWE. Um, so that's Triple H, and... Oh, I didn't mention my favorite match of, uh, with his. So, his run with Batista was my favorite moment. Like, you know, the, the thumbs up, thumbs down thing. Um, my favorite match of his was against Cactus Jack in a Hell in a Cell match. What a match. What a freaking match. Um, but let's move on to number nine, and that is, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And it might be a little low on my list, uh, for what people would say, and I, uh, for, for what other people would have on their list. And they might think, man, Stone Cold is this low on this list. Again, this is just my personal favorites, and I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, I think most people do. And, uh, just iconic, you know, the guy that pretty much... In my mind, during that era, is really what put wrestling on the map, right? During that time period, you know, his rivalry with Vince McMahon, which is my favorite stuff in all of wrestling, you know, just, you know, throwing concrete in his car, you know, you know, filling his car with concrete, showing up at the hospital, you know, uh, you know, messing with Vince McMahon, and um, just all kinds of different stuff. Uh, just everything he did with Vince McMahon was just so good. Everything was so good. And uh, my favorite match of his actually was against Bret Hart at Mania 13. Now again, this is a little, just a smidgen before my time, but just that uh, that image of him, you know, covered in blood in the sharpshooter, iconic, and to me really um, took him to that next level. That match definitely did it, and of course his ring, uh, his win at the King of the Ring definitely helped as well. But uh, just that match, I've gone back and watched. It's such a great match him and Brett. And I like Brett a lot. Brett's not on my list. And I, and I know that might surprise people. But again, he's a little bit before my time. And I've gone back and watched this stuff. He's a great wrestler. Great technical wrestler. But if I were to be honest, I think he's a little boring. Personality-wise. But great wrestler, though. And if this was like based on like technical wrestling and that was it, probably would be up there pretty high for me. But in terms of like overall package for me, and I'd say that with Billy Gunn being on my list. But again... Eight-year-old me would have been pissed at myself if if, I, if he wasn't on there. So I had to do it. Had to do it. Um, but still, Bret Hart's great. Don't get me wrong. Love Bret Hart. Uh, but yeah, Stone Cold versus Bret Hart was my favorite match at WrestleMania 13. Uh, next is going to be number eight, and that is the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Um, again, if you're talking about like best wrestlers of all time, Shawn Michaels probably would be number one for me. Honestly, if I would have to pick one in terms of overall promo, uh, pro wrestling, and everything else to high-profile matches, Shawn is on that list probably at number one. But this is my personal favorite wrestlers, and I love Shawn Michaels. Some of his stuff, um, of course, again, was before my time when he was like the Heartbreak Kid. You know, he was with Diesel. 
Um, that was a little bit before my time. I've gone back to watch all that stuff, though. Good stuff. Um, but again, it definitely hits a little bit different when you're watching it, you know, 10 years after it happened or whatever it was. But, um, but I love Shawn Michaels. Such great matches. Um, again, you talk about, you know, DX. I think DX I'm a huge fan of. Um, but his match against The Undertaker at Mania 25. What a match. Favorite match. Actually, not my favorite Shawn Michaels match. That's going to come up a little bit later. But, uh, I mean, most people would say this is their favorite Shawn Michaels match. Some people's favorite match of all time. And that's really good. So if you've never seen it, definitely go check it out. Um, so then we'll move on to number seven, which is the Ayatollah Rock and Rolla. AEW, um, I almost said original. That's not quite right. Um, first ever AEW champion. He's in AEW currently, and that is, of course, Chris Jericho. A uh, huge fan of Jericho. I love uh, Jericho's career. Just a guy that traveled all around the world, um, You know, went to Mexico, went to Japan, uh, was in WCW, ECW, WWE. Not necessarily in that order. Um, it wasn't in that order, actually, because <laughs> he went to ECW, to WCW, to WWF. But that's beside the point. Um, just, just a guy that's – doesn't matter where he's at on the card. Um you talk about a guy that has so many different gimmicks and constantly reinvents himself. A guy that could be a, you know, a low-card guy, mid-card guy, you know, main event champion. And at any point, he's he's going to entertain you. You're going to find him credible. And <clears throat> my favorite moment with Jericho, I'm starting to run out of steam, as you can tell. I'm trying to drink a little bit of water. My throat's a little dry. Jericho winning the undisputed title, beating The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night because it's so unexpected. You know, he was definitely the least likely to win. I think in most people, like most people, are like, oh, there's no way. The fact he made it this far is pretty big for him. But then he went on to win it. Massive. Um, but my favorite match for him is actually 2008 versus Shawn Michaels in a ladder match for the world title. Now that isn't the favorite Shawn Michaels match I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys could probably figure that out. But um, man. What a great competitor is Jericho. Like I said, reinvent himself. I talked about the list earlier with uh, Kevin Owens. Um, a guy that's... Try, let me think of some other uh, great moments from Jericho that I really enjoy. Anytime, like, I loved his promise. His debut was one of my favorite debuts of all time in wrestling. And the funny thing is, I, even, I, had, I had no idea who he was when he debuted. Because, again, I'd never seen WCW. And, uh, you know, he came out. He had, like, that, that long, blonde hair. And um, it was just captivated by him. And... I just thought he was so good. Um, he had some great matches with uh, with so many. I mean, with anybody. Like literally, Jericho's been around forever. So like, <laughs> say he had a great match with someone. So he's had he's had so many great matches. So I'm not even gonna s sit here and list. I mean, he's had great matches with um, C you know, CM Punk. You know, great matches with Triple H. That match against Triple H where he won the the uh, the world title but didn't actually win it. That was a really good moment. Um, he had matches with China. <laughs> With, for the Intercontinental title. Um, man, you can literally say he went against anybody. I'm just trying to think of ones that are kind of um, more impactful. Um, a few different matches with Shawn Michaels that were really good. Um, rivalry with Edge. Um, you, the, the, literally, the list goes on and on. Um, so that's Chris Jericho. Um, and of course, his match with Tanahashi I mentioned earlier. Love that match as well. Uh, so then we have The Undertaker at number... Six. And so I mentioned earlier, Shawn Michaels, my favorite match of his wasn't 25. My favorite match is actually 26. And I know that's going to be controversial because most people probably prefer WrestleMania 25's match. For me, I thought that there was zero chance Shawn Michaels was losing. Because if he lost, he retired. I was like, I was like, he's not, he's not going to lose. He's not retiring. Like, he, there's no way. I was wrong. <laughs> I was at the edge of my seat the entire match because I'm like, oh my god, you know. If if Sean loses, that's it for him. And I didn't think I think I didn't think he was leaving to be honest. So that match was massive for me. So emotionally invested. But I mean, you talk about the Undertaker. Um, you talk about gimmicks, like actual gimmicks. His is probably the the most impactful, the most consistent, the best gimmick in all of wrestling, I would say. And he's reinvented himself a few times. Um, obviously from the you know like the more I guess zombie-like Undertaker to um, the Ministry of Darkness Undertaker to the American Badass, Big Evil, 
Um, back to kind of more of the uh, mythical um, undead Undertaker. I mean, he's had such a long and storied career, so many big matches, I mean, so many big feuds and moments. Um, I mean, the match, the Hell in a Cell match with Foley I mentioned earlier, his match with Kane was on this list. Uh, that match with Edge was an honorable mention. His match with Batista at Mania was really good. His matches with Triple H at Mania was really good. Um, all three of them, even. Not even just the uh, the, the uh, later ones. Even the... Uh, did they wrestle at WrestleMania? I don't think it was 17. <sighs> was it 17? Undertaker, Triple H. It was the match where Triple H hit Undertaker in the head with a sledgehammer when he was going for the last ride. I can't remember. I think that was 17. That may have been WrestleMania 17. Um, you know, from casket matches, um, just so many great matches. Show Shawn Michaels and him had a lot of matches. Casket match. I think that's actually where Shawn Michaels uh, broke his back. Right? Was the uh, the match against Undertaker in the casket? I think. I could be wrong on that one. Um, you know, Undertaker and Stone Cold. Undertaker and um, the Big Show. Like Undertaker versus anybody, please. <laughs> Um, even in recent times, him versus CM Punk, him versus uh, Brock Lesnar, had, you know, they had some great matches. So, I mean, you could literally, the, the Boneyard match with AJ Styles, love that match. Probably my favorite cinematic match was the Boneyard match, after everything's said and done. Probably. A lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, love The Undertaker. Love The Undertaker. I can't say much about, uh, can't say um, enough about him, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Again, I'm running out of steam. Uh, so then, how long have we been recording? For 46 minutes, yeah. <sighs> we just take a deep breath here. I've been talking for like 50 miles an hour <laughs> the entire time, it feels like. Number five was that wrestler I spoiled earlier, of course, The Rock, the great one, the Brahma Bull. You talk about all-time best promos. He's probably the best, in my mind, of all of wrestling. Um, the guy is just so charismatic. Um, so many great mo moments and matches. Probably more uh, known more for his moments than matches, but still some really great matches and rivalries. Um, there should be no surprise that my favorite match um, was against Steve Austin. No DQ. WrestleMania 17. Yeah, that the, the probably the most infamous video package, My Way with Limp Biscuit. Um, so good, and just watching that video package alone will give you goosebumps. But uh, probably a lot of people's best match of all time. Probably the biggest match of all of wrestling, possibly. But man, what a great match that is! But I also wanted to give a a, a nod to WrestleMania 18 against Hulk Hogan. Again, Hulk Hogan's on my list, but just a such a unique match. You know, just the crowd was so hot, and you know they were behind Hogan, who was the heel. So then the Rock had a work heel throughout the match. Um, but by the end of the match, you you're happy that the Rock won. Like it was just such a good match. Um, number four. Talking about another promo guy, CM Punk, um, a guy that I would love to see come back into wrestling. Probably the biggest name that's not in wrestling currently that could come back and make a huge splash, full like maybe a full time or a part time basis. I mean, The Rock obviously would probably be number one. John Cena number two. CM Punk is up there though. CM Punk number three for sure. Um, would be the most exciting uh, for either company, any company to get. I mean, Will Ospreay just challenged him to a uh, to a uh, IW, IWGP uh, World Heavyweight Title match, good to see it happen. Um, you know, CM Punk's mentioned Osprey's name in the past. Maybe they're setting something up. Maybe CM Punk comes back to WWE. Maybe he goes to AEW. Who knows? Maybe he never wrestles again. Who knows? Uh, but it should be no surprise that my favorite match of his is against John Cena. This is my favorite John Cena match at Money in the Bank 2011. Infamous match. Um, CM Punk is on his way out. His contract is ending. And everyone wants to know if he's going to leave as WWE Champion. And he does. So then they have a tournament to determine who's going to be the new WWE Champion. Uh, Rey Mysterio wins, but then has to defend the title the same night against John Cena. John Cena wins. John Cena wins the WWE title. And then CM Punk comes out. Both hold the titles out. And uh, who's the real world champion? We're going to find out. So good. Um, the Summer of Punk is really good. Obviously, um, his Ring of Honor stuff is really good. His, I guess if you want to call it the Summer of Punk there as well. Very similar to the WWE one. Very good as well. Um, obviously, the pipe bomb is infamous promo. But he had also some great feuds with like Rey Mysterio. Um, he had 
his Money in the Bank wins were really good. I'm trying to think his matches against The Undertaker were really good. Brock Lesnar had a really good match with him. Um, when he had like the Wolverine um, facial hair going on. Um, what else? His matches against Daniel Bryan were always good. Um, his match against Raven and uh, Ring of Honor was really good. Um, he had a small stint in TNA. Not very long, but he had a little small stint. Um, I'm trying to think of some other big matches. His matches against John Morrison in the, in the uh, new ECW were really good. Um, kind of a fun fact, he was former tag team champions with Kofi Kingston. I don't know if people remember that. But yeah, love CM Punk, man. Want him to come back, and hopefully he does. I'm taking a little sip of water. We're down to the final three, guys. Number three, TNA. You see, you want to say original, and he kind of is, but I mean, obviously he was in WCW for a little bit. But how about AJ Styles, the phenomenal one? Um, I remember this would kind of give away, possibly. Hmm. Well, I won't say what wrestler, but there was a wrestler that was my favorite at the time because he's number one on this list. And I remember seeing commercials for TNA Wrestling, and it was about you know the pay-per-view shows. It would have like Macho Man in the commercial, um, R Truth, who I recognize as K Quick um, from WWF previously, um, and there was like you know Jeff Jarrett was in the commercial, like all these different wrestlers. I was like, oh wow, look at all these wrestlers. Uh, I didn't know that they were wrestling. I didn't even know this is a show. And now the wrestling over here, that's really cool. And I remember seeing uh, a wrestler of mine that was my favorite at the time in this commercial. I was like, what the hell? So I started like looking into TNA, and then I started watching it on uh, I think Spike TV. And uh, AJ Styles obviously was one of the guys. He was the like the, the guy in the X division. Just uh, fantastic in the ring. He was doing some really crazy and. Um, innovative stuff, right, a lot of springboard stuff, and, um, just so good, and then, when Christian came over to TNA, and AJ Styles kind of aligned himself with the Christian Coalition, started showing a little bit more personality, really got, got behind him then, um, then obviously when he left TNA, um, he went to, back to Ring of Honor for a while, went to, uh, went basically everywhere, he was wrestling at PWG, he was wrestling in, uh, Chikara's King of Trios, had the infamous spot where, he uh, messed up his springboard and was like mad at the ropes for the, the the couple nights that they were doing that show. And then went to New Japan wrestling, you know, pro wrestling as well with the Bullet Club. Was doing big things over there. And obviously, eventually came to WWE. Debuted in the Rumble. And I didn't even think about this when I was talking about my favorite debuts. This might actually be my favorite debut because no one saw it happening. And they did it at the number three spot. It was like, are you freaking kidding me? I remember I was living at Pitt at the time, uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas, and. Uh, I was sitting there, I think I was eating something, I was at my table, and I, was, I, was, I wasn't really paying attention, and, and the music hits, and I'm like, who the hell is this, and I'm like, think, I was like, for some reason, The Godfather came to my mind, I was like, The Godfather, did he get new music, I was like, who the hell is this, and then I Am Phenomenal appears, and it's like, what, lost my mind, and, uh, dude, <laughs> I, every now and then, I'll go back and watch the, uh, the Royal Rumble um, debut over and over again, and, uh, and people's reactions to it, incredible, incredible, and, uh, you know, I, it was kind of worried for him at first, you know, if they were going to really do something with him, but he had an incredible first year, uh, became WWE champion, I believe, in his first year, and, uh, just had a, a great career since then, obviously has a match this weekend as well, uh, teaming up with Omos, against, uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston for the tag titles, and I think they're going to win, I think they're going to win. My favorite match from AJ Styles is actually probably against John Cena SummerSlam 2016, but I want to do an uh, honorable, uh, honorable mention against Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom 10. I mentioned this match earlier. Um, it was my first introduction really to New, J uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've heard of it. I knew of it. I've seen some matches here and there, but it was there. I was like, okay, i got to watch Wrestle Kingdom every year, and I do. I watch Wrestle Kingdom every year. I'll watch some of the other big shows. I'll watch some of the G1 Climax. I'll watch... Uh, uh, like Dominion, I'll watch some of those bigger shows, I don't watch everything because I don't have enough time, they do a lot of shows, but uh, I do watch some of the bigger ones, a lot of the finals to the tournaments, but uh, very, very good match against Nakamura, <clears throat> and number two, by the way, that's one of my, not my favorite John Cena match, it would be against CM Punk, but definitely top five John Cena match uh, against uh, AJ Styles, Who? 
Number two, Daniel Bryan. Um, I need to reorder these guys. Hold on. There we go. Uh, Daniel Bryan. So, Daniel Bryan had my favorite WrestleMania moment ever. When he beat Triple H, and then he went on to beat Randy Orton and Batista the same night. Um, WrestleMania, as it's called. Uh, that monster video package gives me goosebumps all the time. Um, even if I just hear the song without the video, I just think of the video package immediately. Um, the the whole th the funny thing about Daniel Bryan is when he first came to WWE, people were like raving about him, like, "Oh, this guy's the best wrestler in the world." And I'd never really seen much like much with him. I was just like, "Ah," eh. like, I seen a couple of his Ring of Honor matches and stuff. And I was like, "Ah, eh, he's okay. He's a very good wrestler, but kind of boring." But then when he like turned heel, where he cashed in the money in the bank on the Big Show, I was I was like, "Man, this guy's great." And uh, and from there, it just became a big and big, you know, a bigger and bigger fan of his. And then we come into Yeslemania. Well, before that, it, even like his match against Sheamus, where he got bro kicked immediately. I think it was like in nine seconds he lost. You know, the fans started getting really behind him then, myself included. And we just wanted to see him get that big moment. Then he had the match against John Cena at SummerSlam. Uh, lost the match. Or no, he won the match. Sorry, won the match, won the title. But then uh, Triple H pedigrees and Randy Orton comes out, cashes in. And that starts the whole, you know, Daniel Bryan versus the Authority thing. And kind of forced their hands, you know, um, into putting him in the main event at WrestleMania. And then he went on to win it. You know, there was that small fear that maybe Triple H would win, put himself in, like, that evolution triple threat match. Or even if Daniel Bryan wins, they'll go with their plans anyways, and Batista will win. Um, there's a lot of possibilities there. But, man. What a great match. What a great night. All right, guys, I had to take a small break there to rest my voice a little bit. <laughs> but my favorite wrestler of all time is, and if you knew me at all, you knew that this is who it was going to be, it's Jeff Hardy. Now, Billy Gunn was my first favorite wrestler when I was a kid, but then when the Hardy Boys came around, that all changed because, man, Jeff Hardy just was so captivating to me. Um, another guy that definitely innovated um, the wrestlers of today uh, or innovated and, and inspired the wrestlers of today, I should say. And uh, it was so unique. You know, his wrestling style was unique. He was throwing his body, you know, uh, caution to the wind, as you will. He was, uh, you know, doing crazy high-flying stuff. He had such a cool look, such a charisma about him. Uh, maybe not the best promo guy, you know, but I think at TNA, when he was healed, part of Immortal with Hulk Hogan and, and all those guys, Kind of some of the best promos of his entire career. I thought they were great. It's a shame how it ended, unfortunately, but it's still really good. Um, but my favorite match slash moment from uh, from him was actually against The Undertaker. Um, it was the ladder match for the Undisputed title at Raw, July 1st, 2002. Um, after the match, you know, The Undertaker is getting ready to leave. Jeff Hardy gets up, can barely get up, but he's grabbing the ropes. And Undertaker looks and sees him do that. He goes back and hits him with the last ride. Undertaker gets on his motorcycle, starts leaving, and then Jeff gets on the microphone and says, Hey! You haven't broken me yet! And he, like, his voice, like, cracks, and he's, like, barely able to stand. <clears throat> Undertaker comes back in there, picks him up off the ground, about to punch him in the face, but stops. Pats him, and raises his arm. Sign of respect from the Undertaker to Jeff Hardy. Huge moment, gives me goosebumps. I love it. The match itself was really, really good as well. Um, obviously, I know Jeff had, Jeff had some personal problems. If he didn't have those, probably would have been a much bigger star. Um, and WWE probably to that next level. I mean, he definitely could have been. Um, but you know, he won the world title a few times. Uh, Intercontinental, U.S. title, um, Hardcore title, ta multiple tag team titles. My goodness. Uh, I can't remember if he won the light heavyweight title or the European title. I think he may have won the European title. I know Matt Hardy did. I hard to remember exactly everything but so many different great matches and feuds i mean his matches against umaga i think are really good probably a little underrated even but really good um great matches with rob van dam i think they had a unification title match if i'm not mistaken i think it was the uh i think it was a hardcore intercontinental title. i think rob van dam won that match if i remember right but a uh, great match nonetheless had some great matches with triple h matches with edge um so many different tag team matches the tlc matches are you kidding me um so good and, uh, you know, maybe he's, he's slowed down a bit, you know, in, in this day and age. He's still obviously in WWE, um, having the occasional match here and there. Should definitely be uh, presented in a higher position, I think. 
But uh, still, love uh, Jeff Hardy and uh, want to see more of him in WWE. I'd like to see him get one more big title run. If some way, somehow, Edge wins the uh, excuse me, the, the WWE title or the Universal title, I'd love to see him and Jeff have one more big match. Maybe at SummerSlam, maybe a ladder match or a Hell in a Cell match or something along those lines. And maybe Jeff can win or lose, doesn't matter. I would just would love to see something like that myself. A little nostalgia, maybe not uh, something people would be excited for overall, but I would. I would love it. Um, but yeah, Jeff Hardy was my favorite wrestler for a long time. Is it my favorite like current day wrestler that's actively wrestling? That's probably Daniel Bryan. Um, if I were to pick like my favorite wrestler that <clears throat> every show like entertains me and I and I and I, and I want and I'm looking forward to their matches and I and I can't miss. It's probably Daniel Bryan, probably AJ Styles, Roman Reigns is in that list as well. Um, so I'm very excited for the Daniel Bryan Edge and Roman Reigns match. Uh, Drew McIntyre, I'm wearing a Drew McIntyre shirt right now. Um, obviously Bobby Lashley, big fan of. So I mean, there's a lot of wrestlers in today's. And then you go to other companies like AEW. Obviously, a uh, big fan of Eddie Kingston. Love Eddie Kingston. Uh, John Moxley is doing great stuff over there. Um, always love the Young Bucks. Kenny Omega. Eh, liked Kenny Omega before he went to AEW. I'll put it that way. Um, who else? Who else? Cody Rhodes is doing good stuff there. Uh, Darby Allen, really big fan of Darby Allen. It reminds me a lot of Jeff Hardy. I know a lot of people have said that, but it's true. It really does. Um, but yeah, just a lot of great guys in uh, AEW. Then, of course, NGPW, um, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, love Hiroshi Tanahashi still. Don't care what anyone says. Okada, of course, is always killing it. Osprey's doing great. Shingo, big fan. Ishii, big fan of Ishii. Um, and, you know, the list goes on. You know, the list goes on. I watch all kinds of different wrestling. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit into stardom. Um, women's wrestling. Would love to get to, into that a little bit more. I just don't have enough time to watch everything. But I'm starting to get into that a little bit. Big fan of uh, Konami. Big fan. But anyways, guys, that's my top 25 favorite list. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll probably do some more of these lists in the future. Maybe we'll do, like, my favorite tag teams. Uh, we'll do, like, uh, favorite women's wrestlers. We'll do favorite uh, matches. Maybe favorite title designs, favorite Intercontinental Champions, World Champions, etc. Best uh, Money in the Bank cash-ins. The, uh, the lists are limitless you know, and endless. We can definitely make all kinds of different lists uh, on wrestling. Just let me know if you guys want to see it. Let me know uh, if your favorite wrestler made my list. If there's someone on this list you think should have been ranked higher on your list. Um, let me know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, before I go... At the end of these tier list videos, I'd like to tell you guys what's coming next week. So next week, we're going back into our regular uh, tier list. We're doing a Pokemon tier list, fighting Pokemon. I thought it'd be appropriate, you know, we did a wrestling list, you know, WrestleMania, fighting fighters, fighting Pokemon. That's how we got there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Mevermore Daniels. Bidding you farewell, peace, and one love. Bang!